I am Anthony from Hazardsnut, and on Sunday, June 28th, 2020, Masako X participated in a charity question and answer live stream with me. If you do not know who Masako X is, he is a voice actor best known as a member of the Team 4 Star YouTube channel. He currently hosts his own YouTube channel, Masako Extreme, where he creates stories based upon the Dragon Ball franchise. What you are about to see is part of the Q&A live stream. Due to a technological issue, Masako X was unable to participate via webcam, but was able to participate via voice chat. In advance, thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe. Go ahead and post your question in the chats on uh, YouTube and Discord, or, or sorry, well, yeah, Discord, but uh, YouTube, Twitch, and Mixer, and uh, and then I'll ask uh, Miss uh, Masako. It feels dirty to say. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, I, just, yeah, yeah. I can't. It's, it's Naruto. It's fine. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not holding you against We're it. We're calling Naruto I, X because I feel better about it. Uh, <laughs> well, it is funny because I did do Naruto Bridge. But honestly, it's fine. You you be comfortable how you say it. What voice were you in the Naruto abridged? Well, I was one of the I was the editor and one of the co-writers. And... Oh, okay. I was just like, hmm. Yeah, because uh, I, I don't. I, don't... I can give you... Go ahead. Well, I can give you the vague. I I've in in that mainly I voiced the main characters I've voiced the most was Sasuke, uh, Takashi, uh, Hinata, uh, Tsunade, uh, Ino, Kiba. Yeah. Well, that is <laughs> that is a lot of voices. I'm kind of curious what your Sasuke and Kakashi are. Well, uh, well, you know, like Goku's pretty much up here. He's very happy-go-lucky. He's very chill. Whereas with Sasuke, he was pretty much just like an emo kid. Like, you know, I was just Sasuke. I hate the log and all that kind of stuff. Very, very, very demure. Very 2000. And the ve and actually, the curious thing enough is that that voice. Jimmy came a uh, high school host club, a fan dub that I was in. Ironically, with Peanut Butter Gamer back in the day, and uh, we voiced the Hitachi twins, Karu and Hikaru. So, you know, they voiced kind of like similar like that. But so instead of so basically, with Sasuke, you have to give him. You know, then with Kakashi, he basically doesn't care about anything. He's very apathetic. It's like, you know, you guys are like Team Seven, but I don't really care. Huh. And, and then there was just this shot of, like, Kakashi looking at this, like... It's from episode 2, when Naruto gets the squits. And he looks at this cotton of milk. He shakes it, and is like... Hey, this expired, like, two weeks ago. And so, basically, we turn that into, like... Kakashi likes milk. So it's like, huh, I like milk. Huh, moo. Just, like, just that, that was one of his bits. And that was one of the classic catchphrases of Kakashi from Naruto abridged. And then... That basically with Kiba and Neji, they basically just made it, we made them into Bill and Ted. So Bill and Ted, that was their shtick, even though they barely interacted with one another. So that was one of their gimmicks. So like bogus and radical and whatnot, well, bodacious? Well, dude, it... yeah, dude, I mean, Kiba just sound like, dude. And then Neji was like, all right, that's excellent, man. <laughs> Like, we just made them dudes. Uh, oh, that's hilarious. Okay. Okay, so, um... It's like, uh, the question's dried up already? Wow. Because uh, we have, uh... Looks like, between the things, we have about ten people. And no one has questions. Okay. Well, I think, basically, I was able to be quite succinct in my answers already in of itself. Okay, so, is, me... so how far oh, did you... Oh, wait, a uh, what? Go ahead. No, 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 go on. Go on, sorry. I think you cut out there. Oh, oh, uh, I was going to say, how uh, how far did you get in uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? You said you stopped because it got rep 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 uh, you know, repeated. Because it did add DLC that has um, Super Saiyan God storyline in it. I haven't gotten that far yet. I just finished the... The uh, the opening of the Boo saga, you know where um, they steal Gohan's uh, uh, his power to resurrect Boo. That that is where I stopped in the game yeah. so far. So how far did you get? Because I mean the the it is repetitious. It I don't get that wrong. 
it, you do the same things over and over and over again. And, and yeah. then, like, at a certain point, they reset some of the stuff you did. Like, I uh, took out all the bases for the first half of the game. And then uh, by taking out all of the, the super-powered goons, you unlock, uh, uh, you, you unlock characters you previously defeated. But it, it, yeah. it just does this over and over again. Well, the thing is that I, 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 I got up to about the Vegeta, so the end of the Vegeta fight. I did get into a little bit of the Nemec saga, and I kind of... That's kind of neat. Uh, but unfortunately, I then got onto the fact that I was getting in... Well, the current COVID situation happened, and then basically we were having to kind of consolidate what we were doing. We were with TFS, and so we were having to like have all hands on deck for... And then kind of dealing with my channel, so I had to... Kind of streaming so that was kind of something i had to kind of take a break on but now that things are starting to kind of get relatively back to normal i can get back to the game because i do want to go through it because the thing is that i want this isn't a game i just want to blast through in 20 hours i want to basically get through this game and take my time with it and that's not conducive to streaming because basically what i'm wanting to do is pass through it like it's a guide so i want to kind of just like understand everything about it so i want to like do this in my own time take down notes and then come back with a discussion video to go like hey if you weren't able to get through the you know game you know you had to rush through it here are some cool things that we learned from the game so this is something this is a mission of discovery rather than a game you want to speed run through okay okay so i, I do have a question uh zeka 1000 says um what, why don't you do what ifs for other shows? He says, look at the success of Totally Not Mark had when he was reviewing One Piece. Yeah. I mean, that is some, certainly something I would consider doing, but the trouble is, though, and this is something I was actually dealing with when I started my channel, like, in its current guise, is that the thing is, though, you want to have a voice on YouTube, but the same thing at the same time, though, you don't want to go in there with half of the information like half with you know half low half baked as it were so you don't really want to go in without really understanding it all entirely because there's an old saying that i really like it's better to know everything about something or know to only know a little is certain doom so basically it's better to know nothing or know everything or at least close to everything as possible to only know a little about something means you leave yourself open to mistakes so that's why at the beginning of dragon ball when i was doing my discussions i made mistakes and i had to battle through that and it was really really tricky like there are quite a few times i just i almost gave up because i felt like i'm not doing a good enough job so i had to step up so a lot of people have been like saying because i've been dropping in facts i i watch jojo and i'm a jojo fan they say oh cool why don't you do jojo what ifs on your channel i'm like well yeah but i don't know enough about it to justify it i mean there are i'm getting to the point of understanding the show enough to do like well okay how would goku be react if he was in jojo what part would suit him best so i'm starting to gain confidence in myself to be able to do a good video into like okay what would his stand be what part might suit him best and just i just want to do any potential videos I do justice. You want to do it right the first time. Yeah, well, or at least the second time. <laughs> Just don't, don't, don't like, don't strike out too often. Otherwise, you kind of lose credibility. Okay. So Caleb NJ4 asks, "Do you think Vegeta would ever surpass Goku at some point?" I thought in the Moral Saga he had, but I, again, I'm not reading it. I'm just secondhand uh, being told. Yeah. I, I feel like I feel like he already has, and um, Goku has acknowledged it that he has in some way, because yeah, he's proud of Vegeta for doing that. So he is very very proud that Vegeta has managed to find a way to surpass himself, and he did do say that in Resurrection F, like in terms of gaining the Super Saiyan Blue power, he was saying, well, no, he was able to learn that on his own, like go through sheer determination. Go Vegeta was able to find a way, like for example in the Tournament of Power, he. Uh, finds Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, so like Super Saiyan Blue Grade 2. He finds that on his own, 
And he also is able to counter the fact that he doesn't need Ultra Instinct because he is incredibly smart and calculating as a fighter. So he's able to kind of like find a way to be able to adapt and actually block and dodge Jiren with and just just by sheer understanding and knowledge of his fighter of fighting opponent. So yeah, Vegeta has absolutely the tools to be able to to out outdo Goku. It's just a case of Goku. Goku gets these powers relatively quickly, but then Vegeta is able to find a way to get past it through sheer grit. Oh, Vegeta is a tactician, though. I mean, he, he could probably... I mean, Goku... Oh, how do I put this? Um, he's not a thinker, but, I mean, Vegeta definitely is, and I feel like Goku... or Vegeta really should have had the advantage a long time ago, but I, 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 don't, I don't know, like... Goku doesn't put any real thought behind anything, and yet somehow still comes ahead. It just it boggles my mind because logically it makes no sense. Well, I think the way you can best describe it is that Goku has just the sheer natural talent, whereas Vegeta has the sheer uh, he has the body and mindset to break through it. Like Vegeta has to try much harder to get the same powers that Goku does, whereas Goku has innately got the powers. Well, basically, I'm just, I was just saying that Goku has the power of main character no jutsu. <laughs> whereas Vegeta kind of have to work slightly harder for the same games, but he can get said games. Okay, so uh, Dog 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 777 has another question. Is it in regards to DBZ Abridged being over, what parts do you wish you got to do? How would you? How would the team handle the voice acting for fusions? And um, and that's a good question. I actually um, would like to know that. And then, um, can you think of a, f a few funny ways fusion could be handled? But what's your take? Um, well, there were a couple of things I do remember that the team was considering when they were like spitballing uh, the Boo Saga. And the one thing I'm really looking forward to, uh, I was. Saiyan 3 transformation and the way they, you know, it, the situation where Goku is explaining all the different Super Saiyan transformations with, um, with Boo. So he goes, this is Super Saiyan, goes Super Saiyan 2, this is the Super Duper Saiyan, and this, uh, goes into that, this is a Super D Duper Saiyan, and that's Super Saiyan 3. So basically, they don't say Super Saiyan 2 or 3, Goku has Super Saiyan, Super Duper Saiyan, and Super D Duper Saiyan. So you get that little nod to it where Vegeta says, Well, if he's become a super duper Saiyan, then I shall become a super... Uh, hold on a sec. Your connection's kind of, uh, wonky. Um... Yeah, it... that, unfortunately, that, it's kind of like getting to into the prime time around here. Oh, okay, that's right. Wrong. You're also, you're like five hours ahead of me, and you're on Wi-Fi. Okay, so, uh, what... <laughs> You were talking about, uh, we lost you at the part where you were like, and then Vegeta said he's going to become a super de duper whatever. What was the, what would the term be for Vegeta surpassing uh, Super Saiyan 3 in, in Abridged? Uh, I don't know. My best guess would be Super Califragilisticexpialidocious Saiyan. Okay, um, okay. So uh, Lucid's thirteen says, "Have you seen Baki the Grappler? Uh, it's uh, on Netflix." He says it's amazing. Unfortunately, I haven't really, but I've seen that Netflix has been getting a lot of anime lately. So I'm definitely gonna like be able to sit down and yeah, really catch up on a lot of those things because I've noticed that Food Wars is on there, and I've been watching that on Crunchyroll. Um, so it'd be really good and really convenient because. Uh, my TV doesn't really have a Crunchyroll. That extra convenience is like, oh, that's really cool, that's great. So I can actually have that on my, my list. So that's neat. But no VPN for Food Wars anymore. Yeah, because uh, when but I yeah, got my... my... I'll add that to my list. Yeah, so when I got my new TV last... Because I got a 4K TV back in November. Um, nice. I loaded it up, and I go through the things, and I was like, wait a minute, there's no Crunchyroll, and there was no Disney+. Plus." So I actually sent Vizio, I said, hey, uh, can I have these? Like, I could just order them or something. And they're like, well, we're going to add Disney Plus, but there's no de no demand for Crunchyroll. I'm like, How what? Do you ha do people who like anime not not buy your TVs? I don't understand. Like, I should be able to install anything I need on your TV. Well, the, the thing is, though, it, it really depends, honestly, is that... The best thing to do, and this is what Sony's doing, is that they have Android, uh, they, 
power their smart TVs with Android. So, so long as like providing there is an Android app for that, in theory, on Sony TVs you can sideload those types types of stuff, if I recall correctly. Yeah. But you know, at the very least, there is a Crunchyroll app for PS4. So there, there is that, and you can u- use Chromecast um, via right. your phone. So or you, you can, can just stream it off that. your phone. Yeah, you can beam beam it off your phone, of course. Yeah. Uh, so Lucid13 uh, said, uh, if you do decide to watch Baki the Grappler, uh, make sure you catch the 2001 series first because uh, I guess maybe it leads into it. He doesn't really explain. He just says it's super high octane action orientated. So. But then there is a question uh, from Caleb uh, NJ4 who says, uh, now, uh, this is one of these what ifs things. He says, how would you feel about a female Vegeta and Piccolo relationship? Um, I don't know how you want to take that. That, that feels like um, pregnant uh, Sonic the Hedgehog take. Uh. Uh, well, that's that's funny because one of the side gags of, our, of my channel is that loads of people want to do me to do a what if Vegeta was female. We keep, we keep rebuffing it because it's just like, well... The fact is, though, and this is something that's really true, because I do do a what if Goku was female. And the one thing that I always tend to say with characters is that the mark of a good character means that whatever gender they are, it doesn't really matter. It's like, it's almost like a side thing. Like, you have this cool character, they're really engaging, you really think they're quite likable, or they do really good stuff, they just so happen to be male, or they just so happen to be female. It's just like an extra facet, it's not something that truly defines them. So that's the way I see it. So, with the what if Goku was female thing, 80% of what Goku is already in of itself is, you know, already defined. It's just there are only a few things that change, like, for example, Bulma is more more kind of like partial to socialize with Goku because she's like a city girl, she likes, she likes going shopping, she likes makeup, she likes boys, she likes strawberries, meeting a girl who she can basically take under her wing, that's something she really, really finds cool. So there are some subtle differences there. But the in terms of the main core thing. of the character... Sorry? The, the dating Krillin thing is totally different. Well, no, no, not necessarily. Um, basically, it's just like with the Krillin thing. They are already really best friends and really close already as, you know, two bros. So you feel like with Goku, Goku is a Saiyan, doesn't really understand human relationships already, even in his original guise. But with Goku as a female, she's just like, well, what I really want in terms of a companion is a friend, basically, that I get on with. That's the way she defines, like, because Krillin has a crush on Goku, she doesn't understand it. And then Krillin gets to the point where, look, you're kind of leading me on, I don't know what to think. And then she's like, well, what do you think, Goku? And it's like, well... The way I see it, I just want a friend. I want a companion. I want someone to be with and like have adventures with. That's what Goku wants in some kind of relationship and whatever she interprets it as. So in that sense, Krillin's like, you know what, I can get behind that. It's not complicated. It's not because Goku's not complicated. So you want something that's very straightforward and something that feels like, yeah, it's nice. It's wholesome. It's very, very quaint. Something that is not muddled in loads of confusion so that's the way i see it see now uh, going back to the female vegeta question i feel like the saiyan royalty was very very uh, uh what is that uh, father or male orientated uh, patriarchal so i feel like maybe yeah. vegeta wouldn't be a female ever because maybe they would genetically alter that possibility to ensure that the male oh, line is continued no. No, I feel like the thing is though, with again, they are a they are basically a monarchy. So basically with King Vegeta is that granted. The th- the situation being so basically Vegeta was born female. And this is okay, this is this is the way it'll take. So if you're if you're listening to this, you're pretty much getting more than what the channel did. Uh the way I would see it is that if Vegeta was born female, there would be like disappointment. But King Vegeta would then realise the battle power in her is incredibly strong. So that is something. It's not a total loss. So King Vegeta would never be too proud. It's like, you know, denying life or anything like that. Basically, it'd be just like, he'd be a bit disappointed, but then realize, no, no, wait, her battle power is incredible. And then basically be like, 
I want to see where this goes. I want to see whether she'd be actually a very powerful queen to then marry to a Saiyan elite. So basically hold his horses. And then when it becomes clear with Tarbol, Tarbol's a disappointment, and it's a very funny mistranslation, is that in the Yo Son Goku and his friends return thing, and this is something I got from Kairi Yaju on YouTube, and this is something I never realized until she said it, was that Tarbol was not sent to a distant planet, he was sent to a distant star. So you feel like, okay, I kind of see what they were trying to say, like a different solar system, but the way that it's a different star, no, King Vegeta was like, no, no, just program him into a star, s send him flying into a sun, let him burn up the disappointment. And then the, like, the scientists are going, are you sure, King Vegeta? Is that really why? So they kind of were like, yeah, I'm pretty sure the king doesn't mean that. Let's just put him on a planet. Therefore, King Vegeta the fourth would be, that's our Vegeta that we know. King Vegeta the third is what we know as King Vegeta. So there have been two Vegetas before then. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledge.net and our website at hasledge.net.